Ding and I uh, established a marketing training for students, seven weeks free uh, for, for the best, for the most outstanding marketing student leaders nationwide. Uh, that was uh, close to 20 years ago. Uh, uh, well, first, let, I want to be brief. I was given five minutes. So, uh, and I, it's good because if I'm not given five minutes, just like being Salvador, I can talk the whole day. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, a couple of things that I'd like to just tell you what Mark Prof is all about, so that you will know the kind of person that's Dean Salvador. We met over 20 plus years, I met him over 20 plus years ago in an Agora Awards judging. That year, Agora Awards is an award for marketing, and uh, that year they got judges who were former awardees. And not long after, he got in touch with me, and I was surprised. Why would a very busy man get in touch with me asking for lunch? So he had this idea. I said, no, man, we will set up. At that time, it was not Mark Prof. It was called, in his mind, it was called Head Start. And I said, what is Head Start? No? It sounds like a salon. <laughs> uh, and uh, he said, no, 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 I have everything planned out, and let's do this. No? Uh, and true enough, when I checked, it was already registered with the salon, you know? uh, and, 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 and so, so one of the things that I'd like to tell you is one, in one of the sessions, we were discussing, so how do we run it? Uh, and he said, well, this whole thing is going to be an equalizer for people who do not have the opportunities. And I said, hmm, that sounds very interesting. I said, what exactly do you mean? He said, you know, in big companies, they always have, they always want to hire from UP, Ateneo, or so. apologies, I mean, you know, I'm not, that's what he said, you know? Uh, and, and he said, we need to give opportunities outside of these three schools. And I said, okay, we will have social justice this time, we will discriminate against UP Ateneo Lasar by limiting the number of people who can get in so that the other schools can get in. So that's what we did. No? The second impression I'd like to share with you is that uh, there was one session where the staff was late. Uh, the, the, the staff was uh, reporting uh, 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 to him. No? It was late, and I said, Ding, I have to run the class the whole day. I'm hypertensive. I, you know, I need to last the whole day. And, and the staff was late. Nobody was preparing the chairs. It, it was the room was so bad. You know what he did? The president of an ASEAN 10 countries prepared the chair himself. He, he was, that was him. And I was looking at him and said, wow, that's what he was doing. And I said, this must be so important to hit the Mark Prof classes because he knew the people who were going to sit there would be future leaders of the industry, future leaders maybe of the country. Who knows, no? Uh, I interviewed him for Inquirer and I said, what do you think about the Pinoy, the Pinoy marketeers? And this is what he answered and I quote, the willingness to depart from conventional way of doing things. I think it's very appropriate. Although, I, you know, I was reflecting, I think he was also talking about himself. The willingness to depart from conventional way of doing things. No? Uh, in uh, Mark Prof, the way we design classes, uh, we, we were not grading the answers, just the answers. We were grading the questions being asked. So the students were always on their toes, what should we ask? That is so relevant. Uh, it was unique, it was open grade, it was course run. Uh, we had wild cards, we had you know, so many other innovative uh, approaches. Uh, and we had big idea every week, you know, we throw in a case. First week you solve it in one hour, second week you solve it in 45 minutes, third week you solve it in 30 minutes, on the last day you solve it in five minutes. No? 
And if you're late, it's deducted against your time. No? So you have to stand and you have to make sure that you know you do well. And we have big idea session as well. But the most important big ideas are what I learned from being someone. And I'd like to share with you some of these big ideas that he shared with me. I think Ding and I get along well because they like to tell stories. I like to listen. And so maybe, you know, he, he, he finds me some, you know, some, somebody who has, uh, you know, a listening ear. Uh, so one of the things that he, uh, that he said is he had this big idea. So what's your big idea? What's, what's the first thing you did? Uh, we, and, which was, and he admitted that there was a very naughty. He said, when, I, when, when he was with Richard John Vix, he said, well, I instigated a sales union. That's what he did. That was his big idea. Uh, and I said, why did you do that? I said, well, because we feel that, you know, my fellow Pinois are not really treated well. You know? and, and he has this heart for, for the Pinois. You know? Uh, this, this, the other thing is that when he, he came back, he joined the Filipino company. And so I said, so why did you do that? You're already up there. And he said, no, because I've been working uh, for multinational companies. It's not that it's wrong to work for multinational, you know, and, and he would encourage people to do that. But at a certain point in time, you've got to start thinking about how can we help the local underdogs? And that's what he did, you know, with, uh, with a lot of pay cuts, uh, he became, uh, you know, he went, went with the local company. And so, was the creation of Marfa. And his heart was to the underdogs, and he wanted to create an equalizer opportunity uh, for everyone. And I asked him, what is your, what do you consider as your greatest achievement? And his answer, he said, well, being the first non-Caucasian Filipino to be the ASEAN president, open opportunities for other Filipinos. And that, I think, is the life of Nick Salvador. His life is about opening opportunities by, the, by what he has achieved and by the opportunities, that, uh, by the actions that he did, gave opportunities uh, to other people. The last time I got in touch with him, I, we, we were supposed to have, you know, a coffee last year. I texted him, I said, oh, you know, coffee, you know, let's, if, if we have time, let's have coffee together. But of course, men are men. Are men. We make a lot of assumptions that there was COVID time, and maybe, you know, some people were kind of hesitant last year to go out, and I said, so I didn't pursue it. And, and I think that would be my biggest regret. Because I should have pursued it, you know? and you know, I, the last time I talked to him, I interviewed him three years, three years ago. I featured it, uh, and and that was it. You know, I, I should have pursued it. I was uh, sharing with Evelyn. We Mark Pro graduated our 19th annual uh, batch last Saturday, and I wanted to text him on Sunday. Uh, but then I said, I changed my mind. I said, well, maybe I'll text him on a Monday uh, because you know, it's Sunday, come on, you know? So I, I did want, you know, maybe men are men and I didn't want to bother him. But then Monday, just when I was about to text, guess what? I got a text from me or something like that. It's too big. And so that is something that, you know, I probably is going to reflect on this uh, you know, for a time. And I want to just, just uh, you know, share this uh, and pay tribute to uh, a comrade in the field of marketing. A, a, a big name, a big achiever uh, in, uh, in marketing and business, not just locally, but internationally. And wish Big Salvador a farewell. And I'm sure he's in a better place than, than all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vishayan. Now, maybe call on Mr. Andy.